How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much once again for checking out another video right here at NextGenMD. Now if, if this is your first time stopping off at the channel you've never met me before, my name is Gianluca, I am a first year medical student right here in Ontario, Canada at McMaster University and I can report officially that I'm having a great time so far. Okay, We're learning all kinds of new stuff all the time, a lot of you wanted me to check back in with you, let you know what I thought of it so far uh, and I have zero regrets. Okay, We're currently on cardiology, that's what we're studying right now and I'm also in clinic right now seeing patients with a real doctor and then last night we had our white coat ceremony so it's awesome okay uh, and I hope a lot of you get to see it for yourself one day in person at medical school now I'm going to use that as our transition into today's topic what we're talking about today or what we're going to begin to talk about today is the MCAT test okay this big monstrous massive test that you're going to have to write in order to get you into a medical school either Canadian med school American med school wherever it is that you're trying to get into and what I want to do for today uh, first well, it's a big topic, the MCAT. We're going to cut it up into three sections, and for today, what we're going to talk about is the summary of the MCAT. What it is, how do you tackle it, uh, the different sections on it, and then in the, the videos that are going to follow later on, we'll turn this into like kind of a series. I'll go over some of the tips and tricks that I used in order to get, in what was in my opinion anyways, uh, an amazing MCAT score. I got a 517, uh, which is the 95th percentile on the test, and then I got a 131 in cars, which was the 99th percentile. Uh, so let's get to it. So the MCAT test, right? How I want you to think about it going into this process is that it is the last level of a video game. It is the final boss. It is the last thing standing in your way from getting an interview at the medical school of your dreams. Now, in theory, the process is simple. You've already built up that great GPA. You've already got those extracurriculars and those life experiences that you needed. Now, all you need to go uh, do is go in there and beat this last test. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Um, Except the only catch is the test is seven and a half hours long. Six and a quarter of those hours, you will be actually writing the test, okay? Now, the test is broken up into four different sections with some breaks in between, and you're gonna write these, to, uh, these sections back to back to back. Now one of the things that I want to get out of the way right now is that it is true that the test is entirely multiple choice. Start to finish, it's only multiple choice. Uh, and depending on who you are, that might make it a little bit easier, it might make it a little bit harder. But what I want to do right now is quickly go over the four different sections of the MCAT uh, and kind of provide a little bit of a, of a breakdown as to what you're going to expect on those sections. The very first one uh, that you're going to write is the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems. And that's going to be the portion of the test that's going to be mostly uh, physics and, and chemistry uh, oriented. Now the second section of the test is going to be the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the test, the CARS section. And then after then you're going to progress into the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems. That's the biology and biochemistry really dominant section. And then the last one is going to be the psychological and sociological uh, and then also biological foundations of behavior. And that is the psych, uh, sociology, biology last section of the MCAT test. And when you add them all together, basically what you're looking at uh, is again six and a quarter hours and quite possibly one of the hardest tests that you've ever written so far at this point uh, in your educational experience right now what's it like I wrote the test actually I wrote it twice and, and basically uh, I remember being in first year of my undergrad and in my very first semester I had uh, chemistry and physics exams that were booked on the uh, on the same day and these were three hours apiece and I remember in the moment all those years ago being super stressed out uh, about just how daunting that task was, writing two exams on the same day with only a few hours spaced out in between them, right? Um, fast forward to the MCAT, imagine taking four different courses and big meaty exams that are three hours each. Now condense each of those exams, three hour exams, into about 90 minutes, 95 minutes, and now write all four of those exams back to back to back to back. I promise you, uh, the MCAT test is definitely not something that you're gonna wanna take lightly. But it is doable, don't worry about it. I promise you that the MCAT is doable and you are going to get through it, okay? Um, but what the MCAT's basically testing you on is three different things as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that is your knowledge of all of these different 
crucial subjects that are going to help you out later in the medical education, right? Things like biology, physics, chemistry, all come and they stay with you in medical school for the most part anyways. Uh, so your knowledge, then it's also going to be testing you uh, on your problem solving skills because it's not just like uh, match this definition with what this means or ask a standalone question, what's the answer to this? They're going to go ahead and give you a whole bunch of different information. You're going to have to read some passages and things like that and link them all together. So this is definitely going to test you on your problem solving skills. And then finally, the last thing that it's going to test you on is your endurance. How bad do you want it? Can you sit down at this table and stay focused, laser focused, uh, for hours at a time answering all these questions, reading all of these passages, and not just that, even the prep work, the studying that you have to go in beforehand in order to learn everything that you need to know for the MCAT test. And it's all three of these things that are going to go ahead and contribute to a successful uh, candidate for the medical education program. Now, who takes the MCAT test, right? Every year, there are thousands and thousands of people that take the MCAT test from many countries all over the world, right? It's not just Canada and the States that have the MCAT. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other countries. I'm gonna go ahead and list some uh, on the screen right now. But I even had one of my friends who was in South Africa at the time and actually went down to an MCAT testing center in South Africa. Uh, there's many different places where you can go ahead and write the MCAT test. And on top of that, it's not just the doctors that go ahead or or the medical students that go ahead and take the MCAT test. Although for the most part, the medical college admission test is going to be geared specifically for the pre-med students anyways. Uh, there are some veterinary schools that will take the MCAT as one of the uh, admissions criteria for getting into the program. Uh, so there's a little fun fact as far as that goes. Now let's quickly talk about scoring, right? The way that it works, because it's a multiple choice test, is that uh, for every question that you answer correctly, you're gonna be given one point. But for every answer, for every question that you answer incorrectly, you're not going to have any points taken off and therefore it's always in your best interest to always go ahead and answer every single question on the MCAT. Now uh, you're going to get two scores basically as far as the MCAT is concerned when, you, when you're done taking the test. You're going to get an overall test score uh, that goes ahead and incorporates all of the four different sections of the test and then you're going to get the scores for each of the individual categories. So these are going to be your individual scores. Now both of these two different scoring systems are going to be important for you getting into medical school, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Basically what you need to know is that for three of the sections on the MCAT, the first, the third, and the fourth sections, there are going to be 59 multiple choice questions and you're going to be given 95 minutes to do these 59 questions and get them all done uh, as far as that goes. And then on the car section, you're going to be given 90 minutes to go ahead and answer 53 questions. Now, in terms of the actual score that you receive on the MCAT itself, right, I will admit that it's a little bit tricky to understand in the beginning, right? The lowest possible score that you, get, that you could get on the MCAT is a 472, and then the highest possible score that you could get is a 528, right? So all your scores are going to be somewhere in the middle there. Now, what's going to happen is that for each of the different sections, once again, there's a lower end and an upper end. Uh, for every single section, you could score somewhere between a 118, which is the lowest possible score. Uh, and then the highest possible score would be a 132. And basically, if you had someone with four different sections, uh, all 132, it would add up to a final score of a 528. Now, the MCAT is something that we refer to as a scaled score test. And basically, the way that that works is, let's say you write one of the sections and you got a 50 out of 59 uh, questions right on that particular section. Now, that 50 out of 59 doesn't necessarily relate to the actual score or your, your scaled score, your converted score score that you're going to get for that section. Uh, and the reason why is because there are so many different people writing this test all around the world in different countries uh, and on different dates that the people at the MCAT, uh, that make the MCAT, the AAMC, they need to have different versions of the test. Now because now there are multiple versions of the test, inevitably there are going to be some tests that are harder than others and therefore every uh, individual test is going to be assigned a difficulty factor. Now I'm simplifying it a little bit, but basically the way that it works is you get your raw score, your 50 out of 59, you multiply it by that test's particular difficulty factor, and then finally you end up with your scaled score for that section. You add them up, 
all together and then you get whatever you got on that particular MCAT test. So I had some questions from a few people asking about some courses that they might want to take in university, in college, before they went and actually started studying for the MCAT, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the breakdown a little bit right now. As far as the very first part of the test goes, and again, that's the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the board right now as to what the different topics covered are, are going to be on this section and the percentages that they're worth, right? But basically, if you want a strong foundation in this section before you get started, you're going to want to take uh, general chemistry in university, chemistry one and chemistry two, two semesters is usually enough uh, in my experience as far as this went. And then physics one and two, again, this is just the basic physics. Uh, then one of the organic chemistry semesters, uh, one biochem semester, and then finally uh, biology one and two, which is two semesters of introductory biology. Now moving on to the car section, unfortunately for this section here, and actually as to one of the reasons why a lot of people uh, struggle with this section in general, is because there are not a lot of courses uh, in a science undergrad or in many other undergraduate programs that are focused on the type of questions and passages that CARS is asking about. And I think for this reason right here, uh, there are no courses that I would go and officially recommend to take for CARS. However, if you do have some sort of course available to you that you've taken as far as uh, literary dissection going through different passages and understanding the meaning behind the text those are definitely going to help you as well for parts uh, and then finally moving on to the last two sections as far as the biology and the psychology sections go uh, what you're going to want to do for psychology and sociology anyways is take I would say two semesters of psychology any of the introductory psychology courses just so you have some sort of basic understanding before you start studying and then sociology personally I didn't take any sociology in university um, however, I've been told by a few of my friends that one of those sociology courses, like an introductory course, might help you as far as studying goes. Although those are like kind of the, the nitty gritty mandatory courses that I think that everyone should have some sort of familiarity with as far as before you start studying for the MCAT, especially for biology, there are a few more niche courses that are, are definitely going to help you when you're studying uh, some of the different topics. And that's going to be uh, a genetics course, a microbial course, a cell bio course, an anatomy course, and a uh, physiology course. Now if you don't have any of those courses, you're not from a science background, that doesn't mean that you can't do amazing on the MCAT. There are lots of people that have taken the MCAT from different backgrounds, from a business background, a music background, and they've still been able to do really, really well on the test. But you're going to need, uh, on average anyways, a lot more work aimed at studying for the test than someone that already has that foundational knowledge in these topics, right? Um, as far as, uh, you know, who should take it, when should I take it, it's my official recommendation that people should be taking the MCAT starting off in the third year, so like in the summertime after you finish third year, if you're from a science program, because at that point, you're going to have already been exposed to all of these different courses. Now again, you could take it in the second year uh, if you want to, you could take it in first year if you want to, but you're going to go ahead and need to put in a little bit more work. If you take it in the summer of third year, going into fourth year at this point, you're going to have already been exposed to everything, and then from that point, it's just a matter of studying. Now I'm going to talk about in my next video, the strategies that I used while I was studying, but keep in mind, in my opinion and from the opinions of many other people that I've talked to, for someone that has a strong background in the sciences, you've taken a science undergrad, in order to achieve one of the amazing scores on the MCAT, we're talking the 90th percentile or above, on average it takes between uh, about two and a half months and three months, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the next video, but that's two and a half to three months of full-time studying, we're talking eight to ten hours a day, uh, where you're really not doing much else if you're not working a full-time job and you're not uh, setting up a whole bunch of other extracurricular activities you're focusing and you're giving the test the attention that it needs in order for you to do well all right guys and that's pretty much all that I need to say about the MCAT the whole introduction to the MCAT anyways and, and everything that you need to know before you start studying for the test right I promise you this is not going to be easy uh, but you're going to get through it and we're going to get through it together I'm going to share all of my different test taking tips uh, and things that I learned in studying so that you can go ahead and crush this MCAT yourself I hope everyone's having a great day wherever you are and until next time we'll see you later